all right guys welcome back to the channel thanks for tuning in thanks for watching and of course thanks for subscribing we're back at it with fsd 12.3.4 looking again for regressions but more importantly looking for some progress in regards to proximity of curves speeds as well as uh, any other lingering regressions lane selection being indecisive with lane selection things like that waiting to the last minute uh, we're not going to be able to test all of that, but I think the priorities here are going to be regressions as we do our regression test path and uh, the proximity to curves. OK, the curves are like mostly uh, the main issue here. People are curbing their rims, curbing their wheels. Uh, it's a big issue that uh, Tesla needs to address. The first indication that I'm seeing right now is that it seems like the curves are a little bit more pronounced, a little bit more crisp in the visualization. I don't know if that means anything. It could just be me, but that's my first observation of looking at 12.3.4. Creeps up, going to the limit, all clear, and it goes. That's a pothole, don't worry about that. That was a manhole cover, I should say. Don't worry about that, all good. First turn is a success. Got up there, got to the uh, creep wall, if you will, uh, and basically looked, make sure it was clear and went. Got up to speed quickly as well. Auto offset is on. Been doing pretty good with auto offset so far. I don't want to jinx it. Uh, it's gotten a lot better since its initial rollout. Turn here, but now it's slowing down to about 12 miles, 11 miles an hour. Looking at the curve proximity. Looks pretty good. Not bad. Okay, looking at the curve proximity here. Put up my, 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 uh, <laughs> my uh, cameras here. Forgot about that. A little, little close to my taste. A little too close here still. Okay, I'm going to flag that just because two things. One, I put the turn signal on, and then two, it's a little bit too close. Now, I know a lot of people will say, oh, it's just my personal preference. You have to feel comfortable in the driver's seat as an operator of these cars. Okay, cones are here. Cones are not visible or visualized, I should say, but did a good job getting around them. Didn't run into them, so that's great. Overall, good job on the winding roads, passed on that one. Now we're coming up to our unprotected left, seeing how it does there. A little close on this side. We're a little close here. Not too close to the curb, but just too close in this lane. Good job on the unprotected left. No one's coming. Gets up to speed. Excellent, excellent job. Man, it feels so good to do this right after doing it wrong so many times uh, in all the previous versions. So it's really good to feel and see that it can do it competently and consistently. That's the key metric here. That's why we do this regression path. It has to be consistent. FSD has to be consistent and predictable. Predictable to the sense that you know it's not going to do certain things. Just like you get in the car with any other human driver, you expect them to not do certain things, not to run over curbs, not to crash into the cars, not to crash into pedestrians, things like that. You expect that of them. And when they do it, it's like, okay, it's fine. But if they don't do it, if someone automatically started running over curves, you're going to be like, oh, my gosh, get me out of this car. It's a problem. So what we're looking for is not necessarily human-like behavior in all aspects. What we're looking for a comfortable human-like ride that is most importantly predictable and consistent. And it can do the same things over and over and over again the same way every single time. That's what's going to build comfort for mass adoption. Uh, but as I was saying before, being in the driver's seat, you obviously drive the way you drive. Interesting scenario here. Car backing up, slows down. It's not really giving too much room to this cab to back up. It's trying to go around it, but that's okay. He wasn't moving fast anyway, so that's great. A little close here. Look at the proximity. Gee, that was way too close. Um, you drive in your car and you know the way that you drive, you know how you center, how you like the car centered, you know how you like the car to go around turns. And there's a little bit of a buffer between how you like it to be and how the car is driving and then the wrong thing, right? And I think it's drifting more towards the wrong thing when I say it's too close for my comfort. Not necessarily just the way that, um, you know, I prefer it to be, but more along the lines of, hey, it's drifting towards the wrong thing. It's feeling like the wrong thing or the wrong proximity to the curb or like that car too close i would not have pulled that close to that car i would have just slowed down waited for my opportunity 
okay? He needs to make a decision to go past or get in line with these cars. It's putting the turn signal on to change lanes, to get in line. That is the right thing to do, good job. Alternatively, it could have staged that lane and bias towards the center line like it typically does. So a little bit of a deviation from behavior, and it's not as consistent. Like I said, it doesn't do the same thing over and over again. So a little bit unpredictable there. Overall, very smooth, very competent, very confidence inspiring, um, just like the previous version 12 builds. I'm not feeling uncomfortable. I'm not feeling unsafe, with the exception of that close proximity lane staging with that car there a little too close for my comfort so it's definitely going to earn a little bit of a ding there because cars have been there before and it's not had that issue final turn can turn on red car is coming car is turning to the left it can go okay good job there good job there Okay, no curb incidents so far. It doesn't seem to be getting any worse, but it doesn't seem to be getting significantly better in terms of the proximity to the curbs. I'm gonna take over here. Usually pulls over right here. Again, it pulled over right here last time. Now it's trying to turn, and that's interesting. See that? Maybe it's learning from what I, I usually do here. So I'm okay with that. But again, predictability is the key. So, so far, um, it's been pretty good. That was pretty good that last turn, not too close to the curb. I'm okay with that. But um, overall, it's a, a pretty good drive, pretty solid drive. No major, major regressions, but there were some new elements here. This is a different time of day. It's not as, as bright and sunny as it typically is. And it did some things that I didn't expect it to do, but we're not out of the realm of what's safe versus what's not safe, right? So um, overall, I'm gonna give it a level of comfort I'm still gonna give it a nine. I was very comfortable in the drive overall, right? In terms of level of confidence, I'm gonna give it a, a nine as well because it was very confident in everything it decided to do. Even though it's methodical, it's still showing some confidence by saying, hey, I'm gonna take my time and do it the right way. In terms of decision-making, I'm gonna give it an eight. I'm gonna give it an eight for decision-making. Uh, it made some different decisions that it didn't make before. So that, that gives me a little less confidence in its ability to make decisions the same way over and over again. Now, obviously there's different conditions that can change the decision-making, but this seemed to be par for the course for everything that we've always done with the same route over and over again. And if we limit that, that data set to just version 12, it seems to be on par with everything that we've seen so far with our version 12 testing on that regression path, okay? So a little bit of a, a, little bit of a deviation there. In terms of safety, I felt all very safe. Again, just too close to certain things like that car. So I'm gonna give it an eight as well on safety, uh, just because again, if something happens, if um, you know whatever happens happens and we're too close to something and it nicks it or dings it or hits the curb, I have very little room to react. Even if my hands are like steadying by the wheel, by the yoke of the wheel, um, I have very little room to react. Ultimately, my brake pedal is gonna be my reaction, but I have very little room, a margin for error. So I want to, I want the car to give me a little bit of buffer so that if it needs to make an adjustment, it has room to move. But if I need to make an adjustment, I can take over as well. So, this, so the better decision and the better safety decision would have been to, hey, let me not get too close to this car that's parked here. Let me just wait until I can fit into the proper lane, right? Or if I see the cars are going straight, two are going straight, one is going here, let me lean into this and stage this left lane the correct way so that I can... Uh, not have to make an additional maneuver, right? So these are all things that, again, are, are different. And then obviously, lastly, it typically would pull over to the side of the, of the road and then try to go to the next block. This one, it actually turned in, which is, again, not, not a bad thing, just unexpected, unpredictable. It wasn't the thing that I expected it to do in this scenario. So again, just a little bit of less conf little bit not less confidence, but a little less uh, decision making here. Why did it need to turn instead of going straight? What's changed? Map data's changed, location data's changed, what has changed? So again, that's that's just my my take on it. So again, nine nine eight eight, still great scores, still comparable, uh, no major regressions that I have seen other than again, just the consistency in, in the in the uh, the consistency and the repeatability of it all. Okay. Let me know what you guys thought. Let me know what you would, would score based on that. Obviously, you can't feel how it feels in the car, but just based on what you've seen, 
today and based based on what you've seen in other videos of us doing the regression test bath what are you what scores would you give it drop a note in the comments and until the next time enjoy your day enjoy your tesla